So we are approaching the end of a very exciting and very enlightening and uh, festive, actually, afternoon. I would like to thank all the participants for sharing their perspectives and the audience for attending and partaking in this uh, event. I would also like to extend my gratitude to the Commission members, the Secretariat, the Resource Group, our collaborators at Harvard for their diligent work during this interesting and challenging process that led to the report that we have been presenting to you today and that we actually are pretty proud of. In order to continue the festivity, we all invite you to join us at the Law Faculty Library across the square immediately following this event. And I also want to thank all those that have been following us uh, on the webcast, that have been twittering, sending in questions, and I will promise you that the Secretariat and the group will continue looking at your questions and bring them to the forefront. I've had the privilege, privilege of sitting next to Richard Horton, and he has been putting things out on Twitter, and I'm going to go home and see what he was saying. But before that, I would like to ask the chair of the commission, these are your five last minutes as a chair of the commission, rector of University of Oslo, Ole Petter Ottersen, to give his closing remarks. Thank you. Well, thank you, and thank you to the audience and all of our followers all over the world. It has been a great day for me, for the commissioners, and I hope for you as well, because the issues that have been at the center of our discussions, they are certainly important ones. In fact, I was reminded during this debate of a book that came out not long time ago, as a Mughal and Robinson, Why Nations Fail, and I look at institutions in our nation states. But today, I think, we have been looking at institutions above the nation states. But the same thing applies, the same philosophy. The whole world may fail if the supranational institutions fail. So we have elevated the discussion of Asimog Robinsons to a higher level, so to speak. I think there is one word I would like to reflect on during my very last minutes, uh, Richard, and that's the word modesty. Because the issue at hand is so complex, the challenges are so daunting, that the Commission realized very early on that indeed, Iluna, where are you? We understood immediately that we couldn't restructure the global architecture, the global governance architecture. The challenge is simply too demanding. So the modesty comes in because I think that what we can do and what I think we have done is to instill some awareness of the fact that so many political arenas have impact on health. So modesty tells us if we have been able to instill some awareness, then we have achieved our goals and ambitions. What is so important now is to, well, coming back to Jim Morrison, if you make peace with authority, you become authority. I think that was very nicely put. But remember Jim Morrison, he died young. <laughs> and if there is one thing we don't want to see is that this report will die young. We want it to have lasting effect. And then it's very true. We are just at the beginning. Because what Jim Morrison also said, told us is that those who control media, they control the mind. Remember? You should really know this. <laughs> so now the question is, how do we make headway 
into the media. And I think we all bear some responsibility in this regard. You are not here for free. You are here because we trust, we hope, we are convinced that the message that has come out today, so loud and clear, will be taken further by all of you. So that, well, at least we can have some changes to the minds of decision makers. The final thing I would like to say, and this is directed to Dagfin, where, where are you? Dagfin, I think we are very, very clear in the Commission report that it's not either or. It's not so that we will don't play the importance of the vaccine initiatives or all the other target initiatives. It's the other way around. We are concerned because we think political decisions outside of the health sector intervene or even undermine the efforts of your program and other programs that have proved so successful. So what we want, want to see is that we have efforts directed still towards targeted health initiatives, but also that we will have an ability to build all inclusive health systems in different countries. And I think the message from Syria is so telling. As we discussed, pool is coming back. And why is that? Well, one thing is that the vaccination program is discontinued, but there is no access to clean water. Hygiene is suffering. There are dysfunctions in the political arenas outside of the health system that serve to propagate ill health and disease. But Dagfin, I have one last message to you, and that's the last message from me. I was talking about modesty, but the issue of modesty is in fact tempered by the work that you and your predecessors and you, your colleagues have done, because you have shown us that it is possible to change our ways, that you can instill norms that just a few years ago we thought would not be realistic. If we had a picture from this room some uh, 20, 30, 40 years back, or from a restaurant just a few years back, we were smoking. Now the norm has been changed. Now it comes quite, quite natural to us. We don't smoke when we're sitting here or in a restaurant. Norms can be instilled. This gives some glimmers of hope that we can instill the norm that health should be at the core of thinking when decisions are made outside of the health system. That's my final words. Thank you to everybody.